Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the inaugural Willinga Park TV catch-up session. And it's a great honour and pleasure to have sitting here with me one of my fellow workers, our performance horse manager, Mr Brett Parbury, but the man with the vision who has created this state-of-the-art, world-class facility, Mr Terry Snow. Firstly, Terry, thank you for employing, employing Brett and I and letting us sit here beside you, but thank you for your vision of this masterpiece that is Willinga Park. Well, uh, Tim, uh, we couldn't do it without you and uh, all the staff here that have got behind the event today. Uh, they've worked tirelessly, uh, sometimes in uh, more than average weather. Uh, we've had a little bit of rain, as uh, people would have seen on the, uh, on the uh, broadcast, and uh, we've managed to come through all that. And uh, I think people are in good humour and... Uh, and we've had a great day's jumping, so I can't ask for much more than that, can we? Certainly can't. Now, Terry, this place is not just about an equestrian centre. We've got some beautiful sculptures, gardens around this ground. Where has the inspiration come from to create this? Seven years ago, this property was just a paddock. Yes, um, well, I've always been interested in, um, in gardens and architecture and buildings. And uh, I wanted to do something special in the equine space. Uh, it was always my, uh, when I started this, I had an uh, interest in stock horses, but uh, I thought that I should expand that to encompass performance horses. And uh, I started a conversation uh, with uh, Brett Parbury uh, over a period of years about, uh, you know, what he thought, uh, how he thought the sport was going. Uh, Brett uh, had some views about what the facility might look like. Um, and uh, having taken that on board, I'd uh, toddle off and, uh, and disappear for three or four months. And, then I'd put another call in and uh, Brett would turn up and uh, we'd have another, another chat. And there's been plenty of people working with me on this project over the life of the project and it's not over yet. But I think we're uh, just about coming around the corner. Uh, we've got some uh, more work to do and some work here yet to finish. We've got our equine education centre that, we, that uh, we're developing and that won't be completed for another six months. Uh, we are putting in a very big... Um, Show jumping arena, 120 metres by 70 metres with a full um, auto surface uh, so that uh, when we do get a little inclement weather that it won't cut up. Though I must say that the grass surface here today is held up very, very well. Um, and uh, we need uh, stables, of course, for the competitors and we've built an amenity centre for the competitors. And So when you start to add it all up, we need accommodation for judges and uh, uh, officials and people supporting the sport as well as the owners. And then uh, I think important part of the um, equestrian uh, business is that uh, we want to provide uh, a day out, uh, entertainment for the people that come and watch uh, our sport. I know that the sports folk, uh, the athletes are very serious about what they do, but that we need to bring the general public along with us. We need amenities and decent high quality facilities for that because when they get behind us and enjoy the day out and uh, and support our athletes uh, uh, in, with their presence and hopefully uh, with some sponsorship later on that uh, we can build a foundation to launch Australian equine sports uh, in the international space. So we're fortunate here that we've got an international dressage rider. We're associated with a very successful young girl in eventing. Uh, we, our stock horses are um, uh, we believe uh, uh, will be competitive when uh, we've finished our program of training them and bringing them up to date and the genetics coming through the line that Brett's overseen actually. Brett, uh, he won't tell you this, or well he will tell you if you ask him, <laughs> but not many people do. I want to talk a dressage to him. But uh, Brett's an old saddle bronc rider and he's been in the cattle horse industry uh, since day one and, uh, and uh, he's been uh, looking after our stock horses and more particularly um, getting the latest uh, uh, breeding combinations together for our progeny uh, to launch our st Australian stock horse uh, in, on, the, on the big scene in Australia. We had a big camp draft here this year, you might remember. and uh, Richest uh, camp draft in the world, $250,000 prize pool. Peter Comiskey took home over $100,000. Nowhere ever in the world has someone done that in the equestrian world and in particularly in camp drafting and uh, an amazing weekend. Some 3,500 people here on the grounds that weekend, Terry. Yes, and I, I think a lot of people that were new to camp drafting came along and that made, a, made it a very successful day for me and, uh, and uh, for the Willinga team to see these uh, people uh, that don't have a background in this sport to uh, come along and enjoy the competitive nature of it and it's a very exciting spectacle. We were very fortunate to have Brett uh, 
uh, do a little master class uh, uh, freestyle um, exercise for us, which was greatly uh, surprisingly with all the uh, cattle people. But uh, they, 40% um, uh, of them said that they really enjoyed Brett's, uh, Brett's show. So I think he might have actually stole the show. And of course, Brett was on a cutting horse and uh, that was quite amazing to see. Uh, he came third in that and one judge thought he should have come first. So uh, <laughs> all in all, we're having plenty of fun down here with Linga with horses. Uh, we've got, uh, and I might let uh, Brett to uh, talk about our horses and, uh, and how he sees me moving ahead on that front. Yeah, great segue to bring Brett into the conversation. Now, Parbs, firstly, you've come up through the school. You've done it uh, probably the way that most of our Aussie riders have done it. You've just knuckled away, knuckled away. The day Terry Snow gave you the call up and said, come down here to Willinga Park and you walked into this property, it's another world, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I never thought in my life that I'd see something of this calibre in Australia. And, uh, and, and, I, and not only I think that, nearly everyone I speak to uh, in the top end of any discipline is saying the same thing. They've never seen anything, and, and it's equivalent to anything in the world. Mate, you went to WEG this year and uh, that horse, Rabbit, has now moved on. It's been sold and it was really sad to see that horse go. But, hey, there's a really exciting chapter coming up for us because uh, Wollinga Park has just, uh, with IRT flow and three dressage horses back to Australia, which we're very proud to uh, be talking about here this afternoon. Tell us a little bit about these three horses. Well, they're the latest three of an acquisition program we've been going on. We have 11 in total in the program. And... Uh, but the last three that we bought, we were quite excited about because, uh, like you say, we closed the chapter on our lovely rabbit, the, owned by Susie Duddy and the Mahines, and uh, he's found a lovely home in America. But um, now we open the new chapter with uh, uh, horses the uh, Theodore, uh, Fusion, Willinga Park Fusion, and uh, Willinga Park Spot On. And um, yeah, very exciting. Yeah, exciting times ahead. And we really look forward to those. Potentially, we're, we're gunning for Tokyo, aren't we? That's our, that's our bigger picture plan. Yeah, look, I, I don't think... want to put pressure on you as a, as yeah. a fellow co-worker, but that's, uh, that would be a dream, wouldn't it? Oh, look, it would be. But, I, you know, that's part of my program anyway. So really, um, you know, I'm always focused on trying to make a, a team. If I have the horse and I have the opportunity, I'll always focus to be there. I'm naturally very competitive. And, um, and I'll make sure, it's just my nature to make sure every stone's uh, uh, looked under every stone, every rock, every way I can get there, I'll be, I'll be fighting for it. Terry, I want to come back to you now because we talk about the horses and there was a hugely exciting weekend uh, the th in the second last weekend of November when you went down to Adelaide to the, three, the only four star in the Southern Hemisphere with a horse that won it in 2016, Willinga Park Clifford and young Hazel Shannon. She's the only rider to have ever gone and won that event two times on the same horse and uh, she's on our team. She's one of our riders. She's based up with Heath uh, Ryan up there on the central coast of New South Wales. Willinga Park Mark Clifford is such a cool horse, he's such a gun of a try when he goes cross country and he's a pretty exciting horse to have on our team. Yes, uh, we're very struck with him, he's, a, he's a, what you might call a cool dude, he just clears the, uh, uh, the jumps uh, but uh, does it with economy and, uh, and speed. You might say cool dude, he makes me nervous, I've never been so nervous in all my life watching a girl I've never met, I was hanging on every stride that he does in that show jumping, but uh, isn't it a great uh, combination? Yeah, it certainly is, and uh, Hazel's, uh, like anyone in the horse sports, uh, she's completely dedicated. Uh, you don't succeed in equestrian pursuits unless uh, you give it uh, about 120% of yourself, plus a bit, and uh, she does that, as well as Brett does, and also some of these young riders we saw here today. They're all of the same stamp. They they give of their all. I mean, uh, we saw um, these young people out here, they've done a wonderful job and the work and commitment they do to get the horses, uh, get the combination going with them and their horses to turn in the results we've seen today and we'll see hopefully tomorrow and Saturday uh, is very, very exciting. And it's humbling for me because I think I work hard and I have a passion, but these people are a lot more dedicated, focused uh, than perhaps I'll ever be. Now we know in dressage, Brett, it's always good to have more than one horse, to have not all your eggs in one basket. That's why we've got a, a team of horses here, I think 11 as you say in the program. 
Terry, it's very exciting to be announcing here that uh, we have a new team member for our eventing team horses, uh, a horse by the name of Willinga Park Cooley, and uh, he's come from Oliver Townsend in the United Kingdom, and he's going to be joining our team with Hazel at the helm, so that's really strengthening her team now because uh, Clifford, as cool a dude as he is, that's giving her the backup horse. Yes, uh, that was the idea that uh, Hazel wasn't to be a one-trick rider, a one-horse rider and that now she's able to work on having a positive combination with two horses. Uh, Cooley SR... SRS. SRS, uh, we call now Willinga Park Cooley. He uh, came second in uh, badminton, so he's a seriously good horse, ridden by one of the world's best dressage rider, uh, uh, venters. And uh, we're looking forward to building that relationship with Hazel, so that when she uh, steps forward into the world scene in the next uh, 18 months, 14 months that uh, she's uh, well equipped to uh, take Australia forward as in has indeed uh, I hope Brett and his dressage team will be in the same way. Well Brett Parbury best of luck for you mate uh, we're going to be following your uh, action of course the next big competition for you guys is the Bonio CDI and of course Dressage by the Sea from the 21st of February the first time ever in Australia we've got two back-to-back -back CDIs so Thursday to Saturday and then Wednesday Thursday to Sunday Thursday to Saturday five international judges, two five stars. We're going to be able to rank ourselves with the best in the world, mate. We look forward to watching your success and uh, Team Willinga is certainly behind you. Thank you. Terry, uh, thank you for all of your efforts uh, for putting this together, for allowing us as uh, firstly co-workers to come in and, and wear the so proudly the Willinga Park badge, but also to all the competitors out there, whether you're a dressage rider, a camp drafter, a venters watch this space, but uh, of course show jumping here, we thank you for your efforts. Yeah, and I'd like to thank uh, all those people that's come along. Uh, we do appreciate the long distance you've come. It'd be heartbreaking for me to have built this and not have people come and enjoy it. And uh, it's uh, lovely to see uh, everyone enjoying themselves here and, and giving it their best shot. So, great. Well, we're going to take a break. After the break, Dave Cameron joins me on the panel. We're going to review all of today's action coming up in a couple of minutes' time. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Willinga Park TV. We're going to get into the uh, catch-up about all the action that was had here today. We've had four seasons in one day. We've had sun, we've had rain, we've had wind. But before we get to that, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome a very great friend of mine, uh, unfortunately not having a horse in the senior this year, Dave Cameron, but welcome to the panel. Thanks, Timmy. It's good to be here, mate. This is our um, first uh, proper show at Willinga, and we're pretty excited to be here. It's, you know, it's jaw-dropping jaw when you drive in the driveway and see... Uh, see this facility and what it is, it's quite amazing. Pretty cool to think that every horse on the ground here, 150 of them, all with rubber floor in their boxes, all with state-of-the-art four metre by four metre, and there's a pool at the amenities building. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. And like the, the stables, for example, you know, you don't get stables like that anywhere, any show in the world. So, you know, we're pretty lucky to be here. Mate, uh, of course, before we talk about today, I wanted to just talk about the World Cup last weekend at Summer Classic. What an amazing class, what a wonderful show. It's so wonderful to have Leopoldo coming back to Australia year in, year out, jumping New South Wales. John and Jane and the whole team, Equestrian New South Wales, do a super job up there. Good weekend. Yeah, no, it was a great show. It always is. You know, uh, Leopoldo comes, so you know you're going to jump big jumps in a big arena and, uh, you know, the World Cup's always a really good class. It was great to see Brookie Langbecker have a win. Isn't it great? This horse here in the Quintago, isn't he just a superstar? You know, he's a great horse. Since that combination has come together, it's gone from strength to strength. And she's been really knocking on the door over the, uh, the, the past, past four months uh, in, in World Cups. And she hasn't won one and she picked a very, very good one to win. And, uh, picked yeah. it early. I heard you on the live stream up there, mate. It was your call. You got in a bit of an argument <laughs> with uh, my co-commentator up there, Martin Costello. Yeah, yeah. He does a bit of uh, commentating. You, you took him. You picked someone else, yeah. but you were like, no, no, she's done it. No, I watched the first round and she really fought for it, you know, and, uh, and it just looked like that day when, uh, you know, a horse was on the job and she was on the job and she, they both seemed to want to make it happen. It was pretty cool to see. <laughs> 
Mate, uh, I asked you before the class to pick out a couple other horses. It's uh, one here today, we're going to watch its round, but Case Brook Lamont, Katie Laurie, how much has that horse just improved since it first touched down in Australia? Oh, it's, it's a hell of a jumper, Timmy. You know, it's, it's the sort of horse that, uh, you know, you, you like watching the ring. It's, it's, it's really uh, flamboyant the way it jumps, and Katie's a real operator, but it's got stronger and more confidence since it's been here. And yeah, it's been very consistent the last three months, and I think uh, she's definitely going to be one this show to um, put a bit of pressure on on Tommy McDermott. It's uh, interesting, I was talking to her, a bit of change of gear, she was saying change the bit, change the boots that she's using, and it's those little details that sometimes make the big difference. Yeah, and that's the thing, when you're a, um, you know, an experienced rider like Katie, she, she knows you know, those little things that, that give you that extra, extra couple of percent in the big classes, and that's the difference between jumping clean round or not. So. Mate, uh, finally your pick horse, that you picked one out that was a real star that really caught your eye. Yeah, probably. PWS Levelinski. Yeah, yeah, the young horse Chris Chugs. Like it's only seven years old, and it jumped in in its in that World Cup as a seven year old, and that's a fair effort. And it's jumped very well with the last couple of big shows, but it jumped particularly well that day. I think it must have had four down, four faults each round. Um, but it looked, it looked sensational, so it's definitely one to watch. Tug, Chug keeps saying it's his Tokyo horse. Well, Summer Classic, a great show. I think we should move on. We've had three classes here today. We had the uh, warm-up for the junior and Amy's first up. The second class, though, was the uh, welcome stakes for the Futurity Young Rider and Mini Pre section. Dave, a uh, really hotly contested class, and uh, great to see Stewie Jenkins all the way from Marlborough in southeast Queensland come down here with the horse that's leading the mini the Futurity Triple Crown series in uh, Blackhall Park Penny Lane. Yeah, no, it's a real cool little horse. It, it, you barely see the fence down. Um, Stewie's had a great run on it since, uh, since he took the ride. And, uh, you know, today it was raining. It was the best conditions for him. And, and he just rode a real sharp, uh, real clever round. He didn't put too much pressure on, on the horse and it won't affect the horse for the next couple of classes. But, you know, typical Queensland, he didn't give away much. He was very tight and, and kept, uh, kept rolling and, yeah, had the win. You watch him here. It's just such an efficient mare, isn't it? I know owned by Sarah and Robbie Allen. It was bought out of a sale, sight unseen down in Victoria, bred by Dennis Crane. It's bred out of side by Daly K, which is just a stalwart of a competitor in terms yeah. of a producer. It's been one of those horses. I remember seeing it as a real young horse at uh, Gatton and Robbie and Sarah both spoke very highly of it then. It just seems like a horse that, you know, wants to do a good job, wants to leave the rails up and, uh, you know, you can go fast on those horses because you don't have to pull the reins much. Becky Jenkins is going to have a real task getting this horse back off oh. him, isn't she? Well, I think Stewie would have had to have won 10 or 12 classes since he's had the ride at least. So, you know, at decent shows. So he's, you know, he, he's really enjoying it. And uh, yeah, Becky was definitely a good wife to give him the ride. Last tilt at him as a Futurity horse because it does now have more than 50 points. We did do the Futurity rules to match the uh, Triple Crown rules so that it could come to this show as a Futurity horse. Second place in that class though, Vicky Roycroft. You can never go past her, can you? No, look, Vicky's, uh, she's only had like a viv for, for a couple of months, but uh, she's, a, she's having a lot of fun on it. Uh, she's won a heap of classes, and, and they're going to be a really good combination to, to, to watch in the future. Uh, Vicky said that she's had a bit of a midlife crisis, and it's like, like a sports car, so that's what she bought. It's interesting, uh, this one by Vivant, I think, if my memory serves yes, me correctly, yes. bred by Jenny and Andrew, yeah. or Jenny, Andrew Inglis and Jenny Shepherd, and brought up yeah. through the grades, and uh, Andrew not so well at the moment, so Jenny and Andrew, best of luck to you, mate, uh, we're all, all cheering for you, but uh, Vic has, uh, again, just changed this horse slightly, I wouldn't say it's been radical, but it's just gone up a gear with Vic in the helm. And it, it is sort of, it does suit Vicky's natural ride, Vicky likes to kick him in and, and dare him a little and, and the mayor just really operates for uh, and like it did for Andrew but but you know Vicky's having a lot of fun and she's going to uh, be a real force uh, to be reckoned with over the next uh, next 12 months for sure. Mate it's uh, a very exciting three series that mini pre futurity level and young rider level there is nothing between those guys here this weekend and uh, it's going to unfold over the next couple of days. Yeah no it's it's a great initiative a great thing for everyone to be part of and I think that uh, you know there's a lot of pressure there's good money at stake uh, you know, the, the scores are pretty tight, so, you know, it's going to be some good jumping over the next, next few days. Two grand was up for grabs for the winner here in the first round of the senior title, the final leg of the Triple Crown, and uh, we saw Katie Laurie take the win. We talked about it before, Case Brook Lamont. This is such an exciting horse. Yeah, no, and, and Kate's put a, put a fair bit of pressure on Tom. Well, she got the win today, and, and, you know, Tom, he's got the added bonus of the Triple Crown, so he, he's, you know, he wants to operate this weekend, and... And, uh, you know, she had the win, and, and, but Tom was very close behind her. 
nothing in it on these horses. We've got the first three we're going to review here. Katie is just such a competitive rider, isn't she? Mm. Well, Katie and Tom are both so competitive. But Katie, you know, she was the queen of New Zealand show jumping. She ran rings over them over there. And she's come here and just strengthened our pool. Yeah, no, she definitely has. And she's got more more solid since she's been here. And, and uh, you know, she's worked at our shows. And, uh, you know, she's got a really good team of horses, which she just always seems to have. Um, you know, and, and as we said earlier, this horse has really started to step up and you know, I actually don't think it hurt her today, the fact that it was raining, it was a little bit wet, you know, it played into her experience a little bit in it's New Zealand. what they deal with in New Zealand you all know, the time, isn't I it? Did, I did say to her, you know, this is right, you're at home, and she said, no, no, I'm Australian now. And uh, she did say, she's only just got used to the drought and it rained, but anyway, she, I, I don't think that hurt her today, and particularly this horse, he would have, he would have been developed on some wet shows in New Zealand. He certainly has. Well, uh, of course, uh, she came in nice and quick, and, and I'll just remember, he jumped out of that combination. He's so neat in front, this guy, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, look, it, it does jump, a spectacular jump when it, when it jumps one really well, uh, as good as any horse in, in any class, you know? So, no, it's, it's definitely a crowd favourite. Tom McDermott to finish second, Elegance de la Chamille, 0.27 of a second. It can be a tough sport, this show, oh, jumping. It, it can, you know, and, and, and you never know. That could be the difference on, on, on uh, Saturday. But oh, uh, you'd, uh, you'd be kicking yourself, <laughs> wouldn't you, at 0.27 of but a no, second? Look, I don't think Tom will be disappointed with the way this mare jumped today. It, it looks pretty solid for the next couple of days. And, uh, you know, he would have done a very good job having it ready for this show in terms of it'd be feeling its best. He, he didn't start it much at Summer Classic last weekend. You know, they've really sort of set it up for, for this show. And there's very good prize money at stake and that added chance of the, the Triple Crown. Such a cool mare, this uh, Elegance de la Chamille. She's not an old horse at all. Young mare, and to be riding for 50 grand here on Saturday is a pretty special uh, convent, convent, com a pretty special sort of, I suppose, concept that uh, it's pretty exciting. Oh, it's pretty amazing, you know, and Tom's done a great job. He, he bought the horse as a sort of an inexperienced sort of six-year-old and, uh, you know, he's really uh, brought it into a Grand Prix horse and it looks very solid. And, and it's another horse, similar to the Penny Lane horse, that it would only benefit it today going for a bit of a gallop around and, and uh, you know, it, it'll be stronger over the next two days. We then go on to Tom and Diamond. This is uh, probably Monty, a little bit more of an experienced horse. It sort of got quite quickly to World Cup level and then uh, it sort of has uh, right been knocking on the door. It won the Grand Prix at uh, Canberra show last year at the state titles. It sort of comes and uh, it, it's seriously one that you can never doubt, is it? No, no, well, you can't, you can never doubt Tom either. Like, you know, you can put Tom on anything and he'll do a good job. Uh, yeah, this mare, she, she's probably not the most consistent mare, but on a day, she's a very, very classy horse. She is the more experienced out of the two mares that Tom rides. Um, but um, yeah, she was great today. And, and it's very important in these sort of shows when you've got another horse backing up your good horse. Or, uh, so that's gonna benefit as well. It'll take the pressure off Shamil a little bit. And um, you know, the fact that Demont's jumping very well, it's, it's, a, um, you know, it's a good thing. Hey, um, we don't have footage of him because I forgot to get Sam to organise it, which is my bad. But how cool is it to see Rowan Willis ride that PWS Chantilly? Yeah, no, that was pretty cool. You know, um, and Rowan, he's a very experienced rider, he's a good rider. So as you'd expect, he, he did a fantastic job and it's a very good mare. Like, uh, it was, you know, great of uh, Chris and Gabby to, to lend, it, lend him the ride. It's great for the show, it's great for the spectators. And, uh, you know, it, it could be interesting. He'll, um, he'll do a very good job. I think he would be quite happy to have the sit on that mare. He came out of the ring and he gave me the big thumbs up. There was a smile from ear to ear. He said, I think this combination suits me. What do you think, Tim? And I have to agree with him. But, uh, hey, there's $25,000 up for grabs here on Saturday. And Rowan's not here just to make up numbers. Mate, any, if you ever watch any of the uh, live stream from international shows, uh, Rowan makes the most of every class, and particularly when there's good money at stake. So he'll be doing that here on Saturday. And, you know, when you get uh, given horses to ride at different things, it's always a little bit, you know, you're a little worried what you're giving. I hopped you know? on it this morning up in our outdoor yeah. arena and had a, had a can around and exactly. jumped half a dozen fences, jumped half a dozen in the warm-up area before he went into the ring. And looked like he'd been riding it uh, for a couple of years today. Two so. factors there. Top international rider, trained by a top international trainer in Chris and Gabby. So you bring the two together, it's like yeah. jam, and, uh, jam and Bickies. Yeah, no, it's pretty exciting, mate. And I do think that uh, he'll, um, you know, he would have got off today and thought, oh, I'm pretty excited about the one I was given. So yeah, that'll be, that'll be very exciting for, the, for everyone to watch. Chug, if you ever want me to ride one of your horses, I don't ride quite like Rowan, but I'd love to sit on any one of them. Hey, um, Dave, uh, we've got a couple of things coming up. I'm going to ask you, uh, without notice, your win for the senior final here on Saturday. Who do you think? Uh, who am I pick? Look, I, don't know. I think Tom's really hungry for it. 
he, apparently he's um he's off the alcohol over the next couple of days. He's uh, you know he's really trying to uh, make the most of it. So tough when we put a bar on every night. There's <laughs> drinks up at the uh, pool again tonight. We've got uh, dinner with the Weg Riders tomorrow night, and then we've got our fun event on here on Saturday night. E exactly. Yeah. Well, we had the, the um, welcoming drinks last night, and you know, free free beer on offer, and yeah, Tom had to steer clear. But but no, that's probably my pick. I think I think he's geared up for this, and it'll be great for Australian show jumping to see him win the Triple Crown and the Grand Prix. Horse that you think we should keep an eye on, just one that you think Specky that could either be coming from from nowhere or one that you think's one to, to watch through the show. Uh, look, I'd probably have to pick um, Katie Laurie's Le Mans. He jumped a fantastic round today, and you know, as I said earlier, if it is a bit of a wet track, I think that's going to help it. Um, so I think you know it's one to watch, and, and her having a win today, she'll be pretty excited to put a bit of pressure on Tom. Mate, uh, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be wrapping up all of the action each and every day on the Willinga Park TV channel. We'll be going live to our Facebook page. Make sure if you're sharing anything from us here at Willinga Park, use the hashtag Willinga Park. We start tomorrow morning at 8.30. There will be live streaming on our, on our website, willingapark.com.au. Just go to the TV section and you'll be able to watch all the action. Of course, you can come to the grounds here. The atmosphere is amazing, Dave, and uh, the live stream doesn't do it justice. No, look, it's, it's great. You know, there's uh, great viewing areas, the bank's unreal, uh, and it's going to be world-class show jumping. So, you know, I'd encourage everyone to get down here and watch some very good show jumping in an in a absolutely spectacular setting. Horse Drawn Tours start tomorrow on Saturday. Darren Dimoff, who designed the uh, four and a half, the four hectare gardens that we have on this property, is taking personalised garden tours. And the guys from Cox Architects, a worldwide award, award winning architects, can take you behind the scenes and show you from conception to completion. And if you are interested at all, we still have spots available on those tours there on Saturday and then on Sunday. Uh, uh, Chad here, who keeps this property, our Willinga Park general manager, is taking people behind the scenes. If you'd like to see how you can maintain a garden of this style and of this manner, then you can do that on Sunday. So it's not only for the show jumpers, if you're a food lover, if you love gardens or architecture, get on down here to Willinga Park. We'd love you to be part of it. Yeah, no, true, Timmy. This, this property is absolutely jaw-dropping. Anyone that comes down on the weekend will be blown away and it's worth a look. Well, we look forward to seeing you here throughout the weekend, but from here this afternoon. Thanks for joining us on the inaugural Willinga Park TV Daily Wrap Show. Until tomorrow, I'm Tim Drevman, and this has been Dave Cameron. Thanks for viewing, and we'll see you tomorrow.